Hey guys, welcome to the second game of the UCSD semifinal, the Winter Games Fest between David Kim and Lore. Lore starting the bottom left-hand corner as the Teal Zerg bottom right-hand corner. We have David Kim as the Purple Protoss. This is going to be on Ride of the Valkyries, which was played uh, mid, well, through 2005, early 2006. If I'm correct on that, I might be off. I don't know. Anyway, big features on this map. You've got your ramp, which is huge. Look at that. It almost takes four uh, to protect that. And on a two-player map, nonetheless, as well as this mineral field, which you need to mine out to get to your, well, you don't need to mine out to get to your third base, but helps uh, access to that mineral only. And also, you can mine that out and attack uh, from the opposite end. Then you're, there's your secondary, uh, an unbuildable field, which, you know, helps against Terran, but not so much against Zerg, because this is a huge area to protect, particularly with the fast expansion, which it looks like David Kim's actually going for, and this ramp is very hard to stop Zerglings running up, because you need a lot of units in the way to blockade, so Zergling run-by is very powerful. Uh, six o'clock expansion, uh, island expansion, but otherwise, uh, right here, ramps all over the place across the mid-map and also you can imagine Templar and Lurkers and I guess siege tanks uh, up in this area that can really hurt uh, expansions to this location. So if you have mid-game control you can just cycle your troops around a lot easier to the 12 o'clock and take your additional basically your third gas which is difficult for either player to take so I feel like strong infantry into the mid-game really pays off and, uh, and it looks like we're gonna see a t well, it's not exactly a 12th well interesting um, not a 12 hatch, a 9 uh, nine hatch here from Lore. So Lore is going to go for a 9 hatch against David Kim and just hope that David Kim is thrown off a bit by this. So he's not going to see the pool here. It looks like he's going to cycle back around. He's going to check that secondary again. But instead of producing the drones right here, right after, and it's going to basically, it's not as um, economically savvy. You don't end up with as high an economic output as you do otherwise. But what you can do is if David Kim was a less experienced player, which I don't think he is, uh, you can basically players look at this and they think, oh, 12 hatch, and they put down their nexus instead at first instead of their forge first, and that uh, makes Zergling run bys that much stronger. Um, and you can just, it, it basically makes it inevitable. But looks like David Kim is playing off the, I think he's playing off the spawning pool. He's attacking it right now, so he sees it. And he is, in fact, going forge first, so forge first, then nexus. So he should be fine here. And so, uh, but doesn't hurt Lore too much. I think that was worth the risk. Um, to just try to play against David Kim a little bit. Two-player map. Uh, I think a lesser player, even players in this tournament, probably would fall for would would have fallen for that. I probably would have fallen for that just because you know, newbie. Anyway, um, <laughs> spawning pool about two thirds the way done. And uh, but yeah, I have to say though, I'm surprised David Kim going for this fast expansion build rather than a two gate build to put on the pressure on the two on the two expansion map. Uh, I, again, I feel like large infantry into the mid game helps a lot, and if you can just seal a Zerg player in to two bases and or do some early economic damage, particularly because around this loop it's hard for Zerg players to kind of protect this entire secondary themselves with uh, any degree of tech. Looks like a couple Zerglings being produced. Six uh, at this stage to do that. And it, well, no, nope, looks like uh, seven. Ooh, eight. So yeah, definitely, I'm sorry, <laughs> eight, ten. Zerglings produce in twos. Very quickly taking out that scout with the initial six. So I've been lucky clicking on Zerglings and finding the one that, that established the kill. And we'll see. It depends, I guess, on gateway placement. Because placement, if you put it up here, um, it makes it difficult to cycle your troops out in the mid game, but it makes it early to block the Zerglings uh, otherwise. Unfortunately, David Kim looks like he's putting it on that gateway to the front. And this is going to be the key area, is the Zerglings can really push through this area fairly easily. Two, two uh, probes in the way. And if he goes now... Um, the second cannon just warping in. If he had just gone right that second, he would have gotten a lot of those Zerglings in. Fortunately, oh, careful. Oh, that really, really hurts, especially when he was very, very dedicated to doing the run by. Actually, very, very dedicated, bringing another grouping of Zerglings uh, forward. And so this is going to be a lot of Zerglings going for this run by. But one of them half damage, two uh, lost, and immediately going to take a third base. I like this strategy from Lore, knowing that it's very difficult to take your. Um, third base basically into the game. So you're going to establish it early and put on the Zergling pressure, try to keep David Kim locked to his base with this run by. The cannon going up, creating another uh, additional artifact, forcing those Zerglings to the south. And the probes trying to get there to blockade. Looks like they are not successful. Two make it through. Looks like four make it through out of that large Zergling grouping. So not a lot making it. A nice Zergling uh, blockade 
almost acting like SCVs there. Unfortunately for Lore, uh, he's going to have to use a lot of multitasking, especially with that third base up, because he's going to want to macro up, and uh, and he's not going to be producing more Zerglings, but yeah, he's going to need to macro up and protect these Zerglings very carefully at the same time. And uh, we'll see, and David Kim, just I feel like he needs to focus on less. These Zerglings are annoying, and this is what I'm talking about, um, not paying attention to the, that Zergling right there and to, for a half second, as a result, taking a little bit of damage here, but uh, needs to be very careful. And now David Kim really dedicating this, able to get a swarm uh, surround on one. Um, he's, he's hurting the Nexus, but not able to do much else, and it looks like he's going to lose a second, and now the Zealot out uh, to take care of the Zerglings otherwise, and oh, he's going to get a third. Uh, so the Zergling Harass not lasting very long, and that's going to open up things a lot for David Kim. He's going to be able to put on um, some pressure if he wanted to. That Zergling can only really scout, and that Overlord honestly could get back there otherwise to do a decent degree of scouting, and it looks like he's producing a Zealot on the front door to put up some additional pressure. I don't think he's going to know about this third base, which would really just be aggravating for David, uh, for Lore. Looks like that Creep Colony is going to be up at the front as well as a fourth hatchery, so kind of a similar build we saw to Game 1. Uh, quick tech to Lair as well. We'll see if he's going to put down that uh, that you know, that uh, Hydralis den. And the Sultan Colony not even upgraded yet, but this Zealot going to barge right in, and he's going to get a lot done. And it looks like because Lore is distracted with this little Zergling in the back of the base, he's getting kind of the attack notices there, and he's not noticing the attacks that are happening at a secondary, so he's going to end up losing a couple drones. So Hero Zealot right here, it looks like uh, now in the line of fire, he's already gotten two kills, which makes him very, very much worthwhile. Looks like he's going to get a bonus kill for a fourth, and uh, actually, wow, escapes with his life. So Hero Zealot. Um, and he's going to see that third hatchery. So this is this is going to give him the impression of three hatcheries. He's going to be able to, wow, run all the way around. And he's going to get a look at the tech. And we'll see how Lore reacts. He's going to put down that Hydralis den, perhaps as a bit of a feint. Uh, unfortunately, the, the lair's already up. I can't see David Kemp falling for that, seeing the Hydralis den, seeing that lair, and assuming that he's going to be seeing lurkers. Um, it looks like the Zealot's uh, kind of running around. I'd expect David, uh, I'm sorry, Lore to put down a Hydro Stun to try to fool him a little bit like Game 1. And almost taking out, wow, that was a real hero Zealot. That Zealot shall be named Robert. And she'll be in the, uh, and he died for ire right there. Way to go, Zealot. Yeah, here's the Spire at the secondary. I think that was a little bit of a, like... Uh, yeah, I think Laura's going Mutalisk since it was just uh, showing the Hydra Den. If he's really thinking about going Hydralisk, he would have put down that Den much earlier. And we'll see if uh, we're going to see some... No, no cannons. So David came a little bit... Uh, it it might have fallen for it. I'm not sure. We'll see if he can scout it out. A lot of probes being produced here in the meantime. And getting down, it looks like two gateways and a citadel to probably get speed zealots. He does have that first Corsera being produced. A couple of Zerlings out in the field. Uh, unfortunately, not a much match for these three zealots that are running in not getting killed, but you're able to run back around, and it looks like an evolution chamber going back in the front door, so very similar to that first build. Although, facing it a second time, I can't imagine that Lore will be able to trick David Kim once again, kind of with the off uh, with those mules that off position. Spire almost finished. It looks like these ults, if they yeah, if they take this southern route, they will be able to see that Spire, unfortunately, for Lore, and David Kim, as a result, will be very, very well prepared for this, and this is not a good situation for Zerglings to engage, because uh, Zealots in close quarters, a single Zealot will beat a single Zergling, you want to surround them exactly like this. Um, I guess these Zealots taking their, their hero Roberts example, I'm going to try to push in that, that from the example of the prior Zealot, they too shall go forth and draw some blood. Going to see that Spire up. David Kim should be getting cannon. Yeah, he's already got some cannons uh, in the backfield. Able to run up and get a, a couple more drone kills, so just uh, even more on the bonus here. And it looks like do a little bit of damage to the spire as well, and even see two mutalisks pop out. So uh, suspicions confirmed. Lore is going to be able to run up uh, with some. It looks like he's got some scourge already out in the field. Just to, I, he might have taken out that corsair. I don't see that corsair out in the field. So I'm going to assume that that got taken. No, it's still hovering above the expansion here getting some cannons down to defend against this. He's also got that Templar Archives and putting down four gateways. And I like this strategy here. I like this build from David Kim, uh, knowing that he needs to, again, troop advantage the mid-game, very, very helpful. Um, and uh, I don't think he's still seen this additional expansion from Lore. Lore will end up in a very good economic position here. Um, able to pick off one probe right there, but taking still a little bit of mutilus damage. At the very least, he's going to be able to run in here and get some scouting done. It looks like some uh, Psystorm also being upgraded. But he will be able to run in here, uh, get some scouting. Looks like he's able to take out that Corsair as well, which is a nice bonus, keeping David Kim in the dark a little bit longer. Um, losing Tumor Scourge, which hurts a bit because that's a lot of gas. And also able to pick off a Templar, so fairly successful Mutalisk attack. Um, and I think he saw the gateways in there. He also saw that Citadel of a Dune. Looks like the legs being upgraded. He also saw that Templar archive, so he should have speed going. A couple more Mutalisks coming up alongside. Uh, we'll see. It looks like he's getting Lurkers to go for maybe a Lurker contain. Also a Spore Colony. 
So Lauren, a fairly good position, but I think he should plop down a couple more hatcheries at this stage, really. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know that teching up is really, he does have that third gas, so it, it won't hurt as much, but I think, again, having a lot of troops in the mid game is very, very, very helpful, and it's uh, very, very strong for, uh, to go into late game, sending those mulesks in back again to try to maybe hunt some Templar and also get a kind of good look at what's going on. He's also got some Zerglings pushing out just in case an, an expansion was being snuck on uh, under him. Looks like he does have that Overlord on the look with that, uh, well, that Overlord is seeing that Dark Templar is what I'm trying to say. He's going to push up. Let's see if he goes to that where he's headed. I think this is going to be the first time that uh, David Kim's going to be seeing this expansion. We'll see if he takes an expansion of his own uh, to react. He's going to have to back off. Careful, Dark Templar, run away. Uh, Lord does a very good job about getting that position. Looks like the Mule's running up trying to catch that Dark Templar, but not able to find it. Um, another creep colony going in the backfield. So Lord, it looks like, yeah, he's, he's uh, going for tech here. He's got that speed upgrade going putting down more creep colonies on that front door, really kind of entrenching himself. Uh, some Zergling cycling around, trying to take out that 3 o'clock. He's in a pretty good economic position, but again, I, I really prefer the large units into the mid-game to just establish map control. Because uh, this, this area right here, he's...